Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to replace the AC compressor and condenser on a 2016 Honda CRV. Now, in order to complete this job, you're gonna need, obviously, a variety of sockets, hand tools. Uh, if we run into any special needs, we'll cover that in this video as well, but you're also gonna need an AC gauge set, a vacuum pump, you're gonna need refrigerant, which in this case, if you look under the hood, it'll tell you what type of refrigerant your car calls for and how much. In this case, this car uh, requires 134A. We're gonna need at least 16 ounces of refrigerant. Of course, we're also gonna need a new compressor and a condenser if you plan to replace that as well. So how do we know if the AC compressor is in fact bad? Well, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is look down in the engine compartment, down at the AC compressor, and see if the clutch is engaging. This is an electronically driven clutch. In this case, I have confirmed that that clutch is engaging, but I'm gonna show you how to check that. So you're gonna to need to have the car running, have a helper inside the car, turn it on and off the AC, and you're gonna to look to see if that clutch engages. So let's take a look now and see what that looks like. So go to the left side of your engine compartment. Here's the alternator right here. This is your alternator. And if you take a look at the belt going off the alternator, when that belt goes straight down, that goes right to the AC compressor. That's the AC compressor down there. So now I'm going to have the driver cycle the AC on and off with the vehicle running. AC compressor is off. It just engaged. You see how it started spinning? AC compressor is off. AC compressor is on. So we have confirmed that the AC compressor is engaging and disengaging as it should. So the next thing we need to do is connect our AC gauge set to the high and low side of our AC compressor system. I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so here's our AC pressure gauge set. Now, the first thing that we need to do is go to the blue side. The blue side's the low side, and this main knob beneath the gauge, turn it to the right and ensure that it's closed. Repeat the process on the high pressure side. Red is the high pressure side. Now, these are the connection ports. These are gonna connect to the high and low side of your AC system. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is ensure that these valves are closed. Take a look at the valve. This is not a conventional righty-tighty. This is a lefty-tighty, see? So you twist it to the left to ensure that it's closed. So we're going to turn that to the left, ensure that that connection port's closed. Do the same thing on the high pressure side. Turn it to the left to ensure that it's closed. Now we need to connect this to the AC ports on the car. Now if you look on the left side of the engine compartment, you're going to find these two service ports right here. Uh, the larger one is going to be your high pressure side, so that's going to receive the red line, and the uh, smaller port closer to the engine, that's our low pressure side, and that's going to receive our blue connection. So I'm going to remove these service caps, which I've already loosened. So let's connect the low side first. This is just kind of like a spring-loaded connection, so you're going to go down on the port, lift up a little bit and just ensure that that engages like so. We'll do the same thing on the high pressure side. All right, both of those are connected. So now that we have our connections, so now that we are connected to our service ports on the high side and the low side, what we need to do is we need to slowly open each of these valves to allow the pressure to back feed up to the gauge manifold. So I'm gonna start with the low side and I'm gonna twist this to the right which will open this but I'm gonna do this very slowly and I'm only gonna turn this till I see the pressure start to creep up on the gauge. You don't wanna overturn this because it may uh, improperly seat the valve. So I'm gonna turn this slowly. We should see that needle rise up if there's any pressure in the system. And you see that needle was brought up. So I'm just gonna turn it a little bit more and then I'm gonna leave that one alone. And we'll do the same thing on the high side now. We're gonna twist this to the right. Keep turning it until you see that needle rise up. Okay, give it a little bit of turn. And now that's done. What we're gonna do now is start the car and we're gonna turn on the AC compressor, see what these gauges do. All right, you can start her up. Is the AC on or off right now? It's off. All right, so the AC's off right now. The AC compressor's off. Go ahead and turn on the AC compressor. Let's see if anything happens on the high side. So I can hear that the compressor is engaged right now. Visually inspecting down in the engine bay that the compressor is engaged, it is engaged. But the high side is not rising at all. 
In fact, the high side is equal to the low side. We're at about uh, maybe 85, 90 on the low side, and we're at 90 PSI on the high side. So that compressor is not compressing the refrigerant whatsoever. So that tells us we do in fact have a bad compressor. So at this point, what needs to happen is we need to disconnect our AC manifold gauge connection ports. Uh, and you would do that by twisting those to the left because it's lefty tighty. So we'll do that on the low side. And then you can disconnect that. We'll do the same thing on the high side. Lefty tighty. Pull up on the bottom like that to disconnect. Now that those are disconnected, what needs to happen? This refrigerant is toxic stuff. You really need to go to an automotive repair shop and have them professionally evacuate and recover all the refrigerant in the system before you go ahead and uh, start working on the AC system. We've just arrived back from the uh, mechanic shop. We've recovered all the refrigerant in the system. Now we need to go down to the AC compressor and we need to start disassembling that from the vehicle. So let's get started. So now what we need to do is we need to remove the belt. In order to remove the belt, we have to relieve the tension off the belt. You relieve the tension off the belt by using some type of leverage on this 17 millimeter lug. So I just spent probably the last half an hour trying to use a box wrench. I was unsuccessful. I had to make my own tool. And this is what I came up with. It's a bunch of sockets welded on top of one another. Problem is if you use a 17 millimeter socket and just your socket wrench, you're not gonna have enough clearance to get the socket wrench on there. So this kind of offsets the head of the socket to the 17 millimeter socket. Now I will look and I will try and find a better tool for you. If I do find a better tool, I will leave that in the description down below. Let's give this a try now. So simply install your tool over that 17 millimeter lug, pulled towards the front of the car. That should relieve the tension off the belt. Try not to put your fingers in between the belt and one of these pulleys, but you kind of shimmy the belt off the pulleys, like so. That's how you remove tension on the belt. And I'm gonna pull my tool out of here. Like so. Now before you take that belt off, I do recommend that you drive your car up on some ramps so you have more clearance underneath the front. And also make sure you have some jack stands underneath the rail right behind the ramps to ensure that if the ramps fail, you have a half a chance. Yeah, so if you take a look under here, it looks like there's a few different panels. This panel we definitely need to remove. Now in order to remove this panel, there's these 10 millimeter bolts on either side of this panel. Uh, we tried to take these off, but these are just spinning in there, so there must be a nut up top and it's rusted and Hondas are just a piece of junk, don't buy a Honda. Uh, but in order to remove these little push pins, you can get a body clip removal tool or a screwdriver. you got to sneak this in here, kind of pop it down. Hondas are pieces of junk, by the way. See, you can just pop it out like that. So just take out all those little pop pins down here and then we'll uh, try and pop this paneling out the rest of the way. All right, so to get this paneling out, it, this is just a, a bit of a nightmare. So we do have to try and remove this 10 mil. It, it's just stuck in there and you can't get your hand up in there. So there's a chance we might end up just uh, cutting the plastic out. But this paneling extends up into the wheel well here. And it looks like there's, uh, sorry, not the best camera, but there's three push pins. There's one there, one a little bit higher and also one up there just to remove this lower shroud, so. All right, so I was able to rip open the paneling a little bit right here, and you can see there's that 10 millimeter. It's kind of rusted onto this nut right here, and this is just uh, a Honda design. We love Honda, don't buy one. Blast a little bit of PV blaster, some vice grips, lock on the nut maybe. Locked onto the nut, and on the underside is that 10 mil, so I'm gonna try and remove it with this little impact. That did it. Nice Honda. And uh, we gotta do the same thing on the underside. All right, so that should be all eclipsed. This piece of junk should fall right out. Hopefully giving us access to that compressor. 
All right, so here's the problem. We do have access to the AC compressor now, but in order to remove the old one and put the new one in, it looks like we're gonna have to take out the exhaust manifold. Now the top side bolts don't look too bad, but on the low side, there's three very rusty bolts, and I think I'm gonna try and knock these out for first. Actually, there's four rusty bolts. Um, trying to avoid cutting these with a cutting torch, but it might come down to that. That, that probably would be the quickest way to do this. Uh, but we're gonna try using a butane torch, hammer on a socket, see what happens. We're probably wasting our time here, but let's, let's give that a try first. Where's 14? 14. We'll see what happens. It spun a little bit. Alright, there's one. That's probably going to be hot. Three for three. She played a lottery tonight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are making progress here. We were able to successfully remove the three nuts off this exhaust connection. Now, pay attention here. There is a bracket that's connected to the exhaust. I guess this would be the manifold piece that goes up, but there's a bracket that connects to the flange right here. I don't think we have to remove this bolt. What we do have to remove, if you look up here, there's another 14 millimeter bolt that connects this bracket to uh, the engine. So I have a 14 millimeter socket on probably a six inch extension that should connect right there, like so. Okay, and this lower part of the exhaust should now be disconnected. All right, now we need to remove this heat shroud. So it looks like we have two 12 millimeter bolts that bolt into the head. And we also have a 12 on the front of this heat shield. Alright, so for this connection, there's a little tab right here that you can push down with the screwdriver and that'll slide it kind of off this metal holding tab. But there's also a tab in the back over here to disconnect the two electrical lines. So I think we've got to hold down on the back tab and that's how you disconnect that connection. Now, this heat shield will not come up over this flange here. And there's two more bolts on this manifold right here. So it looks like we're going to have to sneak down underneath here with a socket wrench to get these other two bolts. I'm going to leave this sensor in. I don't really want to screw around with it if I don't have to. So in order to get to these lower exhaust manifold bolts, I have a 12 millimeter 3 8 drive socket with a six inch extension. And it looks like I'm going to get enough to where I can crack this lower manifold bolts loose, maybe. There we go. That's seated right now. Don't break. Yeah, there she goes. Alright, so it turns out behind this heat shield there are two more bolts that we need to get to. This heat shield's in the way. This oxygen sensor, I don't have the socket for it. So if you do plan to take on this job, try and get the socket for the oxygen sensor. I think they sell oxygen sensor kits. Local hardware store or uh, auto parts store doesn't have it. Here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try taking this uh, adjustable wrench, and I'm just going to bend up on this piece of tin, uh, which is compressed in between this oxygen center and, uh, sensor and the manifold here. And we could always bend this back down when we're done if we so choose. But I'm thinking if we get a flat spot on either side like what I'm doing, 
might just get enough clearance to lift this heat shield up and out of here. That's what I had to do. I don't think this will affect anything at all. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Definitely no way. Yeah, it's just as soon as you go to pull up, it just puts something else. Yeah, damn it. Yeah, that bracket. Alright, it's not coming up. We gotta go back down and take that bracket off somehow. So you do need to take this bracket off. It looks like a 14 mil is the right fit. It's threaded into the exhaust flange itself, so I'm gonna put some heat onto the flange with that little butane torch and uh, not gonna be able to get the impact here in here, so I'm gonna just try using a 3 8 inch drive socket wrench, see if we get enough torque, and uh, see if we get lucky here. With any luck, we should be able to lift the manifold up and out. Oh. It's a little hung up on the bottom. We might need the pry bar down there. Alright, I'm holding on to the top. Are you pulling it out? It looks like it's stuck to this. There we go. Huzzah! So at this point, it is a good idea to disconnect the battery. Probably should have done that a little bit earlier, but no big deal. Uh, so in order to disconnect the battery, all you have to do is take off the negative side terminal, loosen up this nut with a 10 millimeter socket, and you can lift this up off that lug and just put it off to the side so it doesn't make contact with that lug. Now there's no possibility of anything shorting out. Now let's take a look at the new AC compressor. So this is very similar as to how this compressor sits in the engine compartment. So there, there's going to be four bolts, it looks like, two on the top, two on the bottom. We have a connection for an AC refrigerant line here, and one at the top. And we also have this electrical plug, so those are going to be the connections that we're going to be looking to disconnect when we get onto the car. Another quick tip, now that we have the exhaust manifold and cat assembly uh, removed out of the front of the engine here, Stuff something inside the exhaust side of the engine to ensure that no debris fall inside the engine and also the other side of the exhaust flange that goes out to the muffler and end of the exhaust. Just throw a rubber glove over that so we don't get anything uh, dropped in there as well. Alright, so you're currently looking from the top side of the engine down to the AC compressor. Now, first thing we're going to do, and we have some really good access, is we're going to disconnect the electrical connection. There we go. All right, we have that electrical line disconnected. I'm just gonna lift this up out of the way for now. So now that we have that electrical connection disconnected on the top side of the compressor, also on the top side of the compressor to the left, we need to disconnect, I believe this is the, the, the uh, low pressure side. So in order to disconnect this, we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. We're just gonna turn this bolt counterclockwise. There 
There's a 10 millimeter bolt and we should be able to pull this low side line up and out. There we go. You want to make sure you don't get any contaminants inside your AC system so we've lifted this line up out of the way and wrapped it in a clean paper towel. Now we need to go underneath and remove the high side connection and also the four mounting bolts. All right, back on the underside of the car, AC compressor, and here is, I believe, the high side line, so we need to disconnect that now. 10 millimeter socket, a nice long extension. Now we can pull off this high side connection, and uh, I don't know where we can put this out of the way, maybe we'll lift it up a little bit. But again, you wanna make sure you don't get any contaminants inside this system. Yeah. All right, now we need to remove the four mounting bolts for this compressor. I'm gonna start with the lower bolts because they're a little bit more challenging to remove. The upper ones are gonna be a little bit easier. So you're gonna need a 12 millimeter box wrench. Here's my recommendation. Get it seated on one of the mounting bolts like so. I already got these cracked loose, but once you get that firmly seated on that bolt, take a hammer, tap it so that this wrench turns uh, counterclockwise. And by using that hammer, it's just a little bit easier on your wrists. Once you get both these cracked, you should be able to spin these out by hand. One, four, right, two. All right, now we need to remove the two upper mounting bolts. There's gonna be one right here and one right here. You can't miss them. Recommend a 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a 12 millimeter deep socket. I think that's gonna be the right tool for the job here. Got the socket wrench going the wrong way. I recommend starting with the left bolt because that's going to be a little bit more challenging to get off. Leave the easy one for last. All right, so once you loosen up this last bolt, you take that bolt out and have a helper up in the engine compartment maybe. And uh, see if you can lift it up out of there. Yeah, we have a little bit of resistance. There might be an alignment pin there. That's, there we go. Yeah, so there's there's got to be an alignment pin up there or something. And since we had that exhaust manifold out of there, it'll go right up through the center of the engine compartment, I think. You get it? Yep. Beautiful. She's out. Don't drop it on my head. Now that we have the old compressor out, it's important that you compare the old compressor to the new compressor. Just ensure that you have the same number of bolt holes, that the bolt holes are approximately in the same location. You also want to make sure that there are the same number of splines on the old one and the new one so that the serpentine belt will uh, fit the compressor properly. You also want to check to make sure that the rotations are the same. See this is rotation CW, rotation CW clockwise. Both of these pumps call for 134A. The electrical connectors are in the same location and the connection ports here. There's another one here and here are in the same location. Also looking at the new compressor, there are these protective caps. Sorry, we're out of focus, but I do plan to leave those caps on until we are ready to install the new line. So those will stay on until we install this compressor. So now that we have the compressor out, you could just put a new compressor in, but apparently this guy over here bought a kit, right? Why'd you buy the kit? Uh, you told me to. I didn't tell you to. <laughs> Did your own research. Well, he bought a kit and he got this new condenser. So we're going to put this condenser in there. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like it slides into some uh, lower holding uh, grommets. So uh, let's start disassembling the front end and see if we can replace the condenser. All right, I don't know where to start. I guess we're, we, we need to get this off, right? So it looks like we're going to take off a lot of these little plastic pop rivets and uh, we'll see what it takes to get this condenser replaced. Start popping them off. Here. 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 Here.
I will like that. Pull this off here. Ah, wait a minute. I think we're onto something here. There we go. Okay, so this little black piece just pops out of here. See, there's a bunch of clips there, so. Yeah, you just gotta sneak your finger in there and kind of pull it back. Looks like we actually have pretty decent access now. Excellent. So we also have to remove this little plastic piece off and there's gonna be two pop pins on either side, one here and one over there. All right, so once you get that plastic nonsense out of the way, it really doesn't seem too bad to replace this condenser. So we're gonna have to remove the bracket for the horn. That's gonna be a 12 millimeter bolt. Just that one. Oh, there's another one right here. Let's just put them back in there. As for the bracket that holds the condenser as well as the radiator, there are two 10 millimeter bolts on this cross channel up here. So we're gonna remove these two tens. See if this pops right off. It does. There's one bracket. Uh, make sure we label that for the right side or driver side. Do the same thing on the other side. You could identify the passenger side or left bracket because it'll have this little clip for this radiator overflow hose. On the left side of the condenser, it looks like we have a 10 millimeter connection for one of our lines. There. So let's separate easily. Yes, it will. Under the, we are right in front of the passenger side front tire. Now, if you peel back some of this plastic, you'll come upon the connection to the lower part of the condenser. Now, in order to crack that bolt loose, this is what I ended up using, quarter inch drive, 10 mil deep socket, and I don't know, what's that, a three or four inch extension, but you kind of sneak this up in here. You should be able to grab onto that 10 mil and loosen it up like this. It's gonna be a little bit slow, but. It's got to be right off. There we go. Okay. All right, we have both lines disconnected and they're out of the way. Now they should just lift right up. I think. Uh, can you stand off to the side a little bit? What if I lift? Oh. Can you lift your side up anymore? This is as high as mine goes because of that piece of plastic. Can you push yours past the plastic here? Like this way? Yeah, essentially push it past and then we should have more clearance to get it out. Like, will it go through that plastic piece? You have enough clearance on? There she goes. So here's the tip for removing this condenser. There's a piece of plastic right here on the passenger side. What you're gonna need to do is push this piece of plastic back and kind of bring that condenser to this forward channel right here. Once you get it in this forward channel, you'll have enough to shift the condenser over a little bit. And there's that uh, cylinder on the driver's side of the condenser. Uh, it's gonna fight you a little bit, but you just have to work it out a little bit. You'll be able to get it up and out. Really helps when you have two people. So here's the old condenser. Now the system was holding pressure, but you could see how beat up it is. 
Now, what I'm looking for, if I suspected that this had a hole, I would see some oil residue. And I'm not seeing any oil residue, it's just freaking filthy. All dinged up, so, I mean, in actuality, it, it was a good idea to replace this. So, you were right. Now, with that uh, condenser, does everything line up? The new one and the old one, they look similar? I would say so. The only thing that's on these that's not on this are these little plastic guys that I think we probably need to take off. What do you got? You see how, well, no plastics on the edge here, so we probably need to take these off. Oh yeah, those them. rubber grommets, yeah, we just need to transfer those on. They should slide right off. Yep, everything else that looks the same. Yeah, so let's do that and then we'll put the new one in. Yeah, they, they slide right off, right? Yeah, definitely. We don't care about it. Yep, they just come right off. Beautiful. All right, I'll transfer that on. I'm gonna go replace this camera battery and then we'll uh, start reassembling everything. All right, it's time to put the new condenser in. You ready? Well, I think we need to take this out. No, we're, we're gonna leave these protective caps in until uh, we're ready to connect the lines. So we're gonna start with your side, right? Your side's gonna kinda get to, oh, wait a minute. We gotta go down at the same time, right? All right, we have the new condenser seated. Again, the key is going to be to push this plastic piece out of the way. You're going to have to push it out of the way a few inches. It may tear a little bit on the bottom, but that's what you have to do to kind of shimmy this in here. Also, make sure that the new condenser is properly seated in the receiver for those rubber grommets down below. Both of them are. All right, we're now ready to start reconnecting these coolant lines to the condenser. I'm gonna start with the top one. So I'm gonna start by removing this protective plug, 10 millimeter. And it's actually, I can feel a vacuum as I remove this plug. So that gives me some confidence in replacing this condenser knowing that this part was in fact pressure tested and there was still a bit of a vacuum in there, which I like that. That's, that's a good sign. So now we're ready to reconnect the upper uh, fitting to the top side of this condenser. I just came back from tractor supply. I had to get some new bolts. Let's take a look at this bolt. This was one of the old bolts. You can see how the aluminum kind of corroded into the threads of this steel bolt. So I didn't want to reuse this because there was a danger of this being stripped out uh, in the condenser. So these are M6 by one bolts. I couldn't find anything other than steel bolts at the tractor supply. So I am going to be using a little bit of anti-seize on the threads to hopefully prevent corrosion between the bolt and the aluminum here. Now, looking at this AC line, there's an old O-ring on there. Uh, the kit did come included, or well, the kit did include some new O-rings, so I'm gonna carefully take this old O-ring off. Let's see if we can replace it. There's the O-ring. Here's a new O-ring. So we will install this onto this AC line. Now, I wonder if we should lubricate this. It would be a good idea to lubricate it, but what do we lubricate it with? Probably pag oil, right? Do we have that pag oil? So I have a little bit of pag oil. This is for the AC system. I'm gonna pour a little bit out on my finger because I don't want to stick my dirty glove in there. And I'm just gonna lubricate this O-ring. I figure that's a good idea. Now. Let's try and reinstall this connection. It slid right in there. Here's our new bolt, M6 by one bolt. Put a little bit of anti-seize on it. Don't need much. Now here's the big question. What is the torque spec for this fastener? I looked high and low 
and I'm not really sure, but I think 14 newton meters or 124 inch pounds is probably close, so that's what we're going to try here. I think that's a good torque spec right there. Again, 124 inch pounds. All right, here's our lower connection. So we need to carefully remove this old O-ring. You gotta be very careful with these steel picks because uh, aluminum is very soft. So do not dig this pick into the aluminum. Here's our new O-ring. Right, I got a little bit of pag oil on my finger. We'll lubricate this. Uh, we also have to remove that protective cap. Uh, 10 mil. That just popped off, so now we should be good to insert this line back in here. All right, now I'm gonna try and start this bolt up there. You're not really gonna be able to see much here, but. Okay. All right, we're done down here for now with that line. All right, now we All need right. to, yeah. All right, now we need to reinstall these metal brackets. I'm gonna start with the passenger side bracket. And again, that's gonna have this little gray clip so it's received into the grommet, top side of the condenser, and also the upper grommet is received into the radiator, like so. There's, an, a, little, there's a little alignment pin that locks into the channel up here. Of course, the hose for the radiator overflow locks in there, and there are two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so now we're going to start reinstalling all this plastic nonsense. So this is the first piece that goes in. So this gets clipped right onto this cross member and this kind of slides in here like so. Uh, the ends go underneath the tabs that kind of go towards the headlight, but above the grommets. So and you're kind of going to have to play around with this. You could keep putting clips in here, but I mean, look, look at all this nonsense. <laughs> There's like a hundred of these clips, Christmas tree clips, push pins, whatever. Well, they're not Christmas tree, they're push pins, right? So yeah, we were just conversing, trying to figure out whether we were going to pop the grill back in. We're going to go ahead and pop the grill back in now uh, because it's not going to interfere with installing the compressor. So you want to try and line those things up. Locked in on my side. Pretty good. It looks like there's four, four more uh, push pins that need to go in here. So looking on my side here, there's one that goes here, one that goes here, and then the same thing on the other side, right? Yep, one there, one there. Okay, we're now ready to install a compressor. So I have my helper. Uh, slowly dropping down the compressor through the upper part of the engine compartment. All right. I guess it's got to rotate a little bit. I'm trying to push it up. It's like, it's, I'm getting some resistance up top. Am I hooked on something up top? Yeah. Can you lift it up a little bit? There you go. Yep. Right there. Oh, okay, that's where it is. I see ya. All right, you should be pretty much on the, it's gotta go a little bit to your right. I think I'm pretty lined up right there. But there's that alignment pin. I think it's in. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I feel the alignment pin in. Because the... I think you're pretty good right there. Uh, um, are you supporting it at all? I am not. I can try to. Go down. All right, now I'm going to start torquing down these mounting bolts, and according to my research, each one of these mounting bolts receives 192 inch pounds of torque, or what, 16 foot pounds? 16 foot pounds, correct. 16, okay. So I have my inch pound torque wrench set at 196 foot pounds. This is the wrong size. What size do you need? I need quarter inch drive, 12 mil. While I'm down here, I'm also going to connect the lower refrigerant line. There is a protective cap on the compressor. So this is a 10 millimeter stud. Back that off. It's maybe under a vacuum, not sure. Yeah, there's a little vacuum in there. That's a good sign. Take that protective cap off. La 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 la. I gotta replace the O-ring on this lower refrigerant line. There is our new O-ring. A little bit of pag oil on my finger. Lubricate that O-ring, try not to get any contaminants in the system. Slide this up on this stud. Put this nut back on here. Uh, do you remember if there was a torque spec for the nut? on the compressor. This looks like it's all steel here. Now, I'm not sure what the torque spec is for this lower AC compressor connection. I'm going to set it at, what, what did I say, 12 newton meters? 14. 14 newton meters, which is 126 inch pounds? 124. 124 inch pounds. Alright, we're now on the top side of the engine looking down at the compressor so I need to remove this protective cap now and once I remove that then we can connect the refrigerant line to the top side of the compressor and again we need to replace that uh, that o-ring so let me remove that cap now and after we get that uh, refrigerant line plugged in there then we can reinstall the electrical connection Now this line is going to go in between the belt and the electrical lines that run down along the uh, alternator there, if I'm not mistaken, like that. Install this line. All right, and we'll torque that 10 mil down there to 124 inch pounds. Okay. And then we also need to reconnect the electrical connection. Like so. All right. And I think what we need to do now is to reinstall the exhaust manifold, which I am going to do that off camera. Alright, change of plans. As opposed to installing the exhaust manifold, first what we're going to do is actually pull a vacuum on the system. 
Uh, and what we're trying to do, we're trying to evacuate any moisture or any contaminants in the system. And we're trying to pull a vacuum down to 30 inches of mercury. Now, once we pull a vacuum, ideally down to 30 inches of mercury, we want to pressure test the system. So we want to let the system sit at 30 inches of mercury, I think for at least 45 minutes, ensure that that needle doesn't move. And that will tell us that our repair was good thus far, meaning that the system is sealed up properly and there's no problem with the O-rings or anything like that. So let's connect our gauges to our service ports now. All right, so he's gonna to connect to the low pressure line first. It's connected. Yep. Now the high pressure side. You're not very good at this, are you? There we go. Okay, <laughs> and now we can open up both of those valves. You hear a little noise? Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, that should be good. And you don't want to over crank these valves open. Okay, that looks good. Now, here is our brand new vacuum pump. These normally ship without oil, so make sure you add high premium vacuum pump oil to your vacuum pump should be in between the sight gauges here. Additionally, make sure you remove the exhaust cap before operating. This is the exhaust cap, so we'll take that off. Now we need to connect the yellow line on the manifold gauge to this top port right here. All right, so correction, he's actually gonna connect to this side port. These are different. Uh, the one off the right is designed to connect with our uh, vacuum line. That's going on there now, right? Yep. All right, and we're also gonna reinstall the cap on the top port. All right, that's good and tight? Yep. All right. All right, now we're ready to pull a vacuum on the system. So in a moment here, I'm gonna turn the compressor on and then open up the blue manifold valve and then the red manifold valve. And what I'm gonna be looking for is for this gauge to go to negative 30 inches of mercury. There's a spot for negative 30 on both sides, so not sure how long this is gonna take, but let's get this thing pumping. Sucking, sucking, right? Pump is on, open up both these gauges. You can hear the pump starting to work. Let this run for a little while. So this has been running for about 10 minutes now and it looks like both gauges are just about at 30 inches of mercury. So what I'm gonna do now is close off the low pressure valve and the red high pressure valve on the manifold gauge here. And now I'm gonna shut off the compressor. And now we're gonna let the system sit for maybe 45 minutes. And what we're gonna wanna check to see, we're gonna wanna check to see that these gauges don't creep back down we want these to stay at about 30 inches of mercury. If they go down at all, that means we have some type of issue with the seals in our AC system. So we'll watch this very closely. In the meantime, we're gonna reinstall the manifold off camera. So after 45 minutes, both of these gauges are holding at 30 inches of mercury. So I am confident now that the system is sealed up properly. Now, according to my research online, even though the system is holding pressure right now, online I have seen that others recommend that you continue to pull a vacuum for up to 45 minutes. And I believe the purpose behind that is just to help ensure that you extract any potential moisture in the system. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the vacuum pump back on and I'm gonna crack these manifold gauges open, low side and the high side. And I'm just gonna let this pump continue to run for probably the next I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. Okay. All right, now it's time to reinstall the belt. So we wanna make sure that the belt is wrapped around the new AC compressor in the middle of the grooves. I'm gonna take my custom 17 millimeter belt tensioner socket trio here. Take the tension off the belt tensioner. Wrap the belt around the tensioner pulley. Make sure it's around the alternator too. I may have to adjust this a little bit. Oof. 
Right, that belt is properly wrapped around the tensioner. It's properly wrapped around the alternator. And it is properly wrapped around the crankshaft pulley as well as the AC compressor. So I'm gonna remove my socket wrench, or my ratchet and my socket set. And uh, I think we're looking pretty good here. All right, so this has been pulling a vacuum now for probably about a half hour now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off the compressor now, in order to do that, I'm gonna close off the blue manifold knob as well as the red manifold knob. Make sure those are closed to the right, and then I'm gonna shut off the compressor. I can now disconnect the yellow line from the compressor, and we can get ready to start charging the system. Okay. So looking at the air conditioning system sticker on the top of the hood, this unit calls for 134A, 15.4 ounces to 13.6 ounces, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so the owner of the car provided me with this stuff. This is 0R. This is a R134A replacement refrigerant. So this, call, this car calls for, what, 15.6 ounces max of 134A. One can of this stuff is equivalent to 16 ounces. Now, I'd imagine when we run some of this refrigerant through uh, our fill line, we are gonna have to purge just a little bit out, so we're gonna put just about one full can in the system, and then we'll see how things operate. So the new AC compressor that we just installed did not have oil in it, so we need to add PAG oil, P-A-G oil. And now, Chris Fix says that you can add oil via the yellow line from this open end. However, on my yellow hose, there is a valve right here. So, it's unfortunate because there is probably a vacuum in this yellow hose right now. We're going to have to break that vacuum. Uh, so, where we're going to have to add this PAG oil is from this side of the yellow hose because there's not going to be a valve on this connection. So what we're going to do, just double check that these manifold valves are closed. I am going to have to crack this, and you may hear some sucking. Alright, not, not too much. But what we're going to have to do is pour our PAG oil on this side of the hose. And just kind of keep it in a U and keep the oil in there. I, I don't think it will come out the side with the valve, but this is the only way we're going to get the oil in the system. So. Uh, Compressor calls for 80 milliliters. We're gonna go ahead and add that to the yellow hose now. All right, so this is a little bit of a disaster here, but we're doing the best we can here. So basically what happened, we were able to fill up this yellow line as well as inside the manifold, this cavity right here, with about 40 milliliters of PAG oil. That's all this line will accept, including this little sight gauge inside the manifold. So we have PAG oil probably to up about here. So what our plan is, we're going to connect the refrigerant line to the yellow hose right here, and we're going to let enough refrigerant out as to where it pushes all that oil through this sight gauge. Of course, we have to do that with the engine running. But after we push all that oil through, we're going to close everything off, disconnect the can, and then we're going to fill this up with PAG oil again uh, to hopefully jam or ram 80 cc's, 80 milliliters, right, of uh, PAG oil down through the manifold gauge here. So, uh, Chris Fix, if you're watching, your information's wrong. Definitely not the most conventional way to do this, but what we need to do now is connect this valve to the top of the can. So there's actually a little needle inside this valve here, so you spin this stem counterclockwise all the way, that'll draw the needle uh, back up into it's a little cavity, so now I'm going to thread this on the can. Hand tight. I'm going to connect this to the yellow line, or charging line. Now typically, you would uh, pierce this can and then purge the air out at this little uh, port right here off the yellow line. But because this is filled up with the oil, we're not going to be able to purge that air out right here. So what I'm thinking I'll do, I'll pierce the can, charge it, and then I'll 
back off this fitting a little bit and we'll purge out a little bit of air right there. Have no other choice really. So just felt a little bit of resistance. Pierce the can. It's down all the way. The can is pierced, so I'm gonna back this off a little bit. We're all the way now. So we now have refrigerant connected between the can to the yellow line. I'm gonna crack this a little bit. I saw a little bit of refrigerant come out of there, so that's the best we're gonna do uh, for purging the air out of the system here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start the car, turn on the AC compressor. All right, camera's on. All right, go ahead and start the car and turn on the AC. All right, now I'm gonna open up the blue side. So what we've done, we've refilled the yellow line with PAG oil as well as the sight gauge uh, in the manifold here. So this next round should fill us up with the 80 cc's of uh, PAG oil that's required for the compressor. So I have a new can here, six ounces. So I have everything tight. I'm going to go ahead and pierce the can now, feeling some resistance. All right, the can is pierced. I'm going to back this off. That's going to allow refrigerant into the system, or well, in the yellow line. Now again, because this yellow line is filled up with oil all the way to this point, there's just going to be a little bit of air right here, so I'm going to spin this off just a little bit until refrigerant comes out. It should purge the air out. All right, I saw a little bit of refrigerant come out, so we did the best we could to get any air out of the system. So now I'm gonna have the driver turn on the vehicle and turn the AC compressor on. So we're gonna open this up again. We're gonna open up the low side. We're gonna watch this sight gauge. All right, I'd like to kind of explain what the problem was in the last segment of this video. So the low side was going in the vacuum. The reason was that there was a restriction on the low side, therefore the compressor was pulling harder than the refrigerant returned back to the low side, something like that. This was the bad part. I guess this, what's this part called? Expansion, valve. expansion. We believe it's called an expansion valve. If that's incorrect, I'll cor correct that in the description now. But uh, we believe that there was some type of restriction on the inside of it. This, and it's common for these to go bad. So we ended up having to uh, suck out all the refrigerant out of the system, and then we had to uh, disconnect the lines. And I'll show you where this part was. So that expansion valve is back in there and you can replace it from this side of the engine there's some other good videos on that I will show you one of those videos uh, but definitely do that when you replace a major component on your AC system but now looking at these gauges these gauges are stabilized and they look pretty good we've added 12 ounces 12 actual ounces of this refrigerant we may end up adding a little bit more over time but you know again they say 16 ounces uh, or six ounces of this is equivalent to 16 ounces. I don't know. I think that's false advertising. 
just get the 134A. Don't, don't bother with this stuff. But let's look at these pressures. The pressures are very stable. We're at about 28 on the low side and we're at like, I don't know, 174 on the high side. Those are pretty good pressures. We could add a little bit more. Uh, we have a meat thermometer inside the vehicle right now and uh, it's, it's right at about 54 degrees. So it's working. We could put a little bit more gas in here and maybe get a little bit cooler, but I think we're gonna leave it here for now. It's nine o'clock, we've been on this job for about 12 hours now, so we could always add, add a little bit more gas later, but everything's working good right now. Compressors and overheating. Inside temperature is at about 54 degrees, so I call that pretty good. We'll leave it where it is for now.